Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to share 25 plus tips and tricks for your OnePlus 6T. Now, whether you own this phone or want to buy one, this is the video to watch to get acquainted with this phone. So let's dive in and discover some tips. Now, the very first thing I'm going to talk about is the actual fingerprint sensor. So if I turn off the screen really quickly, and if I double tap on the screen, uh, you're going to see the fingerprint sensor right over there. Uh, if I press on it, it's going to unlock and take you into the actual phone. Uh, what you can do with this is you, you can actually change the fingerprint sensor animations. So if you go to the actual settings over here, and then if you go into the security and lock screen and tap on fingerprint, you're going to put in your passcode. And then at the bottom here, it says fingerprint animation effect. So if you tap on this, you have a couple options. You have the Cosmos, you've got the wave, and you've got the stripe option. So anytime you're using the fingerprint sensor, you can have one of these animations play in the background. So let's try the stripe really quick. So if I turn off the phone, double tap it, you're going to see the stripe effect, as you can see. Or I can have the wave effect, that the one that you just saw that I used. Or you can have the cosmos effect, which comes default with the phone. So again, turn it off, double tap. That's the cosmos effect, all right? I like the, uh, the stripe, to be honest, so I'm going to, so I'm going to keep that option. So let's uh, continue to the next tactic. Now, if you go to the main screen of the settings, and if you go into um, buttons and gestures, uh, over here you have the navigation bar and gestures option. Now, if you tap on this, you have a couple ways to actually navigate your phone. As a matter of fact, you have three ways to navigate your phone. Now, the first one is the very basic one. So that's the back, home, and recents. So when you do that, you get three buttons at the bottom. That's the recents button, okay, that's the home button, and that's going to be the back button right here. Now, if you tap on this again and go to back and home, you're going to get the Android Pie version, the original Android Pie version. So you only get the home screen and you get the back button. So you can tap on this to go back. You can swipe to bring up the ac recent apps, and also you can tap on the, on the actual button to go back home. Again, you can swipe up and you bring up the recent apps. Now, you tap it. Go back to navigation bar and gestures. And the final one is the navigation gestures disappear. So if you tap on this one, the entire thing just goes away. Now what you can do is you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go back home. You can also, uh, to bring up the recents, you just go up slowly. And then you have the, to go back, you can actually swipe up from this side or this side. And if you're in the landscape orientation, you can also uh, go back by swiping just like you see on that little animation. So let's take a look at that quickly. So if I go up slowly, that's going to be the recent uh, screen. Now, if I were to go back fast, it would take me back to the home screen. And if I'm in the actual settings, so let's go back over here, go to the settings. If I want to go back, I just swipe up like this and it takes me back. Okay. So the one that I like is this one. So I'm going to keep it like that. Now on the top here, you have navigation bar customization. So if you actually have the navigation bar here, and if you tap on this, you get some customization options. You can swap buttons if you have to. So if I do it on this screen, now I just want to let you know, depending on which option you choose, the navigation bar customization is going to change up a little bit. So with this one, when you swap buttons, the back button is here. But when I do a swap, the back button goes over here. But if I was in this one, in this one over here, the back button is going to be right here. And if I go back here and swap it, the back is going to be here. Recent is going to be here. Okay. So just be aware of that. Uh, let's just go back in here. You have the option to hide the navigation bar. So if you tap on this one, you've got this dot icon over here. If you tap on it, it disappears. If you want to bring it up, you just swipe up like that, tap it again, and that locks it in place. If you tap it again, it goes away. Now, if you bring it up right now, it's going to go away if it is untouched. But if you want to lock it in place, you tap on it and that's locked in place. You can also assign multiple functions to the home button. So uh, with the long press action, it brings, up the, it brings up the search assistant. So if I double tap action here for the home button, uh, for example, I can say turn off the screen. Okay, so when I double tap uh, this home button, it's going to turn off the screen. All right, and then double tap again to go right back inside. Fingerprint sensor, all right. Go to settings. So that's the... Uh, buttons and gestures, navigation bar, and navigation bar customization. You can do this thing with the recents button and also the back button. You can assign the long press action or you and you can assign the double tap action on top of the single tap options that's already built in. 
So just be aware of that if you're into customization like that. So let me keep it like this for, for now. Uh, let's go back and talk about quick gestures. So with this one here, the quick turn on camera is very easy. I'm sure everybody knows about this. Uh, double, double press the power button to bring up the camera really quickly on the go, okay? Even if the phone is actually turned off. Now let's go to quick gestures. And then you have some options here such as flip to mute. So if you enable this, let's say somebody calls you or you get a notification. You just flip the phone and put it on the table upside down and it's going to mute whatever notification is coming up. Then you got the three finger screenshot. So if I go out here and if I swipe three fingers, it's going to take a screenshot. All right. Uh, let's go back in there. Settings, buttons and gestures, quick gestures. So that's three finger screenshots. Swipe to take a screenshot. Answers call by a gesture. So if I tap on this, basically if somebody calls you and if you pick up the phone and put it next to your ear, it's going to answer that call. You don't have to actually press the answer key. So that can be very useful. Just enable it if you want it. And then at the bottom here, you got the screen off gestures. We've been using double uh, tap to wake. If the screen is turned off, just like that, you double tap to wake it. Then you go right inside, you've got the music controls. And also you got these drawing gestures that allow you to launch applications. So if, for example, if I draw O, I can launch the calculator, okay? If I draw V, I can launch the calendar. So let me show you how that works. So if I close it up, if I draw an O, it's going to ask me to put in my thing and boom, we got the calculator. The same thing is going to happen with calendar and you do have a bunch of options to do that customization. So there's the quick gestures. So you can draw O, V, S, M and W and every single one of these guys are customizable. And these are all the options you're going to get for each button. Open the camera, open the front camera, record a video, turn on and off flashlight, or just uh, launch any application that you might have installed. All right, so that's absolutely fantastic. Let's move on to some other things. All right, now I'm going to go into the display of this phone. And over here, if you just look down over here, you have the notch display. So if you tap on the notch display, if you don't like the notch, you have the option to disable it. Now, it's not going to be as if you don't have the notch at all. You're still going to notice it a little bit, but it does a good job at hiding it. And also on the top, you have the, uh, the, the space is being utilized. So you actually have some information tucked in over there. So you do get more of a display to look at. So if I go, go home, uh, I see more of the actual display and the icons are on the top over here. Uh, let's go back to the settings and uh, go back into display. So that's the notch display. So let me just keep this active for now. And then um, I want to scroll down, go to ambient display. So the ambient display is basically a display you see when the screen is off. Normally you have to pick up the phone to see the ambient display, but if you want, you can tap to show uh, on the lock screen. So let's pick a clock style really quick. So let's just pick this. I like this one. Okay, so that's a good ambient display clock. Uh, this one is analog over here if you want to keep that. Uh, let's go back. You can have a display message. I can say Saki Tech. There we go. So save on that. And if you want uh, the display to wake every time there's a new notification, you can enable this as well. Now, if I go back into the uh, display, let's uh, turn this off. If I tap on the screen, you'll see the, um, the, 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 the ambient display. So let's go right inside. And also one more thing, if you go back into display, you also have this option here, the theming option. So if you tap on this one here, you have a bunch of options. You can go colorful, dark, or light. So the dark mode is this. It's going to turn your phone. It's going to give you a, a dark background, as you can see. Okay. So even the, 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 the quick toggles bar panel is going to be dark, darkened as well. So tap that again. Go back to light. I prefer to keep the light, especially for video making and demonstration. Uh, but the other thing is you can change the accent color so I can have red click. Now, as you can see, all these uh, titles over here are now red. And then if I pull this down, all these are going to be red as well. Okay, so again, let me just show you one more color. So if I pick green and tap OK, now these are going to be green over here. And if I pull this down, all these are going to be green as well. So that's something that I like on this uh, on the OnePlus 60, this uh, accent customization and then you can change the font of course that's simple I'm not going to go into that uh, but you get the system at the bottom you can go to the status bar and make some modifications to the status bar so what's the battery cell that you want you want the circle you get the circle on the top right uh, if you want the 
battery hidden, it's going to be disappeared. Okay, maybe you want to use a widget instead. Uh, but I like the battery bar. You also show, show the battery percentage. So if you enable this, now it's going to show 47%. And with the circle, it looks the same. And with the hidden, uh, you only see the battery percentage. So that's a nice option to have as well. You can display the network speed. So if anything is downloading or uploading, it's going to show you how fast it's happening. And then with the time, you can show uh, hours, minutes, and seconds, which is something I happen to like. Uh, but if you don't want time at all, again, maybe you're using a widget, boom, the time is gone as well. And then you can tap on Icon Manager and just change the icons for all these uh, status bar icons. Not change them, disable them or enable them. So if you don't want nothing, boom, just disable everything. And if you go back out here, you have the screen calibration, now has a few extra options. I like to keep it at adaptive mode so the screen adapts by itself, but you can customize it if you so desire, if you tap on this. You can do cold, you can do warm, you can do middle, or you can choose any one of these options that you desire. Okay, adaptive mode is the best, I think. And then if you go into the security and lock screen, I'm going to show you one more thing. Uh, if you do go to the fingerprint and enable it, uh, you can actually name these fingerprints. So you can say thumb. Okay, so I can just say thumb just to keep track. Now I do want to let you know you cannot add the same fingerprint twice. So that's my thumb, this one right here, and that's my index finger, this one. So if I click on add a fingerprint and tap on next, I am unable to add this again. It says this fingerprint has already been enrolled. Please try another finger. So I was trying this to actually make it even faster, but looks like they have it that disabled. I do hope they pick the, uh, change that later with a software update. And then make sure you have these two options enabled. Tap the screen to show the fingerprint ambient display and also pick up your phone to show the fingerprint ambient display. And of course, that ambient display is this thing right here, okay? So you wanna, you wanna make sure you see that at all times, so you press it at the right place, all right? And also, if you press and hold on the screen, you can go to the home settings, and you got things like swipe down. So if this was disabled, and if I went out there, if I swipe down, nothing happens, I have to do it from the top over here, okay? But if I have that option enabled, tap, swipe down now i can swipe anywhere on the screen to bring down the notifications panel which is the way i like it all right home settings you got a bunch of other things you got the icon pack you can change the shape of the icons uh no borders round borders as you can see there we go let's go back out now it's, they're all rounded if i go back here i can uh, go to the icon pack squares so now they're all squared any way you like it. I, I prefer to have the, um, you can also download more from the store, by the way. Uh, I like this one over here, so let me just keep the square and round it, all right? And on the leftmost screen, you can tap on this. You can either have the shelf or the Google app. So if I have the shelf, and if I swipe over, that's my um, OnePlus shelf. But if I go back to the home settings, and if I tap on the uh, leftmost screen, if I say Google app, now it's going to take me to the actual Google Home app. Alrighty, and the final thing I want to talk about is the actual quick toggles on the top over here. So if you press and hold on these guys, it takes you to the full settings. If you just tap on it, it disables or enables that setting. And if you tap on the actual text, and of course if you uh, go down here and tap on this pen icon, it allows you to edit the quick icons. Okay, so you can, if you don't want something, you just grab it and dump it right there. It's not going to show up on the top over here. Tap this button, you can reset it if you so desire, but that's just one way to customize that quick uh, panel. Alrighty, and then if you go into the utilities under settings, you have the gaming mode. So if you're gaming, you can make sure that the answers, uh, notifications get blocked so your gaming experience does not get uh, interrupted as you're immersed in your game. So look, how to show notifications, you can block, text only, or head up. So that's the heads up display. So if you're playing a game, it's just gonna pop down and disappear. You can only do text if you want, just like that. You can just block it if you just are into that game. And of course, disable the automatic brightness automatically when the game launches so it doesn't go you know, low or high for no reason. You just uh, look at your game at a locked brightness. So play with the gaming mode if you're a gamer as well. And also we have the pocket mode. So this is gonna make sure uh, that the phone blocks accidental screen touches or fingerprint operations when the phone detects it's in your pocket using all the sensors. Okay, so you can disable 
or enable this. And of course, this is something you probably have seen before, the OnePlus switch. Uh, it is a new thing, but you may have seen it in other videos. But if you tap on OnePlus switch, it allows you to migrate all the data from another phone to this phone. So you can say I'm an, on a new phone, that means you're gonna be receiving data, or you can say I'm on an old phone, that means you're on an old phone and you can send the data over to a new phone. Now, if you have another brand, you have to go to the Play Store on Android and download OnePlus Switch application, okay? And that application will give you the same options you see here. So if you have another phone, you download the app, you tap I'm on an old phone, and then you bring that phone here, and on this phone, you tap on I'm on a new phone so that data can get exchanged. So that's OnePlus Switch, okay? It's a very nice, interactive, nice looking little screen. Nothing new, but I like the way it's presented. So that brings us to the end of this tips and tricks video. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know what you think about the OnePlus 6T. If you have any other tips to share, just drop them down below as well so other people can benefit. Make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech, give this video a thumbs up. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, follow me on all at Saki Tech online. Guys, have a fantastic day.